are almost almost to breeding and I just wanted to show y'all something real quick check this tunnel out it's a hand hewn look at that Search. We should be within a few miles of what I'm looking for. You scan the sides is all you can do. You're looking for a sign that says Markham Cemetery or any left that goes up a gradual slope. So I, I looked at it on satellite on Google Earth to get an idea of the lay of the land general idea of what I'm actually looking for should have been about uh, about three miles give or take past that tunnel but I generally, I'll start looking right after a landmark because a lot of the time, you know, you're, you're just going by satellite image. You can't really, you can gauge distance, but not really that accurately. When it gets right down to it, it's just you looking. If not, I'm in the area I'm not afraid to knock on a door or two and ask for directions if needed. But we'll look first. That old boy's working on an ATV. I'll go back and ask him. <laughs> I can already tell you we got a lot in common. <laughs> All right, guys, check this out. <laughs> Just happened to be going up through here. Thought I'd stop for some directions. Looking for a Markham Cemetery. I run into a whole family of Markhams. Say hi, Markhams. <laughs> they actually, uh, they've seen one or two of our videos. And uh, we're out here working on a Sunday, I see, by the way. Didn't, didn't really catch that till just now. Today's Sunday and you're working. Working on riding, yeah. <laughs> but these guys were nice enough. They've actually seen a couple of our videos. And uh, they've seen the, uh, what, what was the Dingus one? The Dingus oh, the Tunnel? The Dingus Tunnel. The Bloody well, Dingus. I've seen the one in the tunnel and I've seen the one in the lake. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've seen both of them. Imagine that. It's out in the middle of nowhere, what? Um, I don't know, close to an hour from the house. <laughs> and just stop to ask somebody about Markham Cemetery and it's it's a bunch of Markhams. How about that? But anyway, I thought we'd put them all on the channel real quick. Say hi guys. Hey. <laughs> YouTube, this is the Markhams. <laughs> Alright, I better get out of here guys. We'll see y'all a little bit later. <laughs> okay. Now this right here is the first of about three or four Markham cemeteries right here in the same area. The little tunnel is right up that way. There's this one on this side of the tunnel, one on the other side of the tunnel, and then there's two other ones. But these here, these two here, I've got directions, good solid directions, found this one, and I think I know where the other one's at too. But wish me luck, guys, with a little bit of luck. I'm hoping we're gonna get it the first time and find this little, find this one little spat, patch of ground 
that I've came all this way to find. I've actually stopped at three different houses and talked to people. The, the last one, uh, the guys at the garage were the only ones I actually recorded. Uh, anyhow, this is the first one, so I'm going to go on up, and I'm looking for Gideon, is who I'm actually looking for, Gideon Markham. But there's several other Markhams uh, that are, you know, related stories as well, and related to this one. So, wish me luck. Here we go. Got a really interesting story for you guys today. Uh, drove about supposedly you know supposed to have been about 40 minutes but it's taken me about two and a half hours to find this place uh made another video about it by the way Keisha, for those of you who don't know on our sister channel um the hillbilly files daily made a if y'all want to go check it out you know head on over there check it out subscribe if you like uh made a video of my little adventure uh coming over here to find this place we are in the remote area of Breeden, West Virginia. It is a very long drive through some really curvy roads. But most importantly, the important thing is, we found what we're looking for right there. Gideon D. Markham II, or Jr., or as he liked to be called, Gid was part of a well-known and respected family in the breeding area. Now, I'll let Heather kind of fill you guys in a little bit about them. Uh, anyway, close to Christmas in 1911, Gid was going about his daily business when two detectives from the infamous Baldwin Feltz Detective Agency appeared. One of them uh, was a well-known, notorious detective named John Van Hoos. He had a reputation, well guys, quite frankly, excuse me, but he had a total, he had a reputation for being a total badass, okay, and somewhat just a little bit on the untouchable side, you know what I'm saying, that, that kind of thing, but either way, maybe this one day his guard was down, or maybe he had begun to believe all the hype about him being the baddest man around. But regardless, they had come to arrest young Gideon today. Now, Gideon had been charged with robbing several of the Norfolk and Western trains that were working here in the area at the time. Uh, no sooner had John Van Hoos tapped Gideon on his shoulder and said, Come along, when Gid whirled around quick as can be and shot John straight through the head, killing him instantly. He then stood there and shot the dead man's body four more times. He immediately turned and started to run uh, before anyone barely even realized what had just happened. The other detective uh, with John was a man named George Dameron. Uh, he finally gathered his wits and drew, brings his guns out, and he fires and hits uh, fires nine times as Gideon's running. Gideon falls dead on the ground, on the cold ground. This was, like I said, this is close to Christmas in December, close to De uh, in 1911. Uh, the bloodbath was over, but warm blood now soaked the cold dirt. George stood somewhat stunned and then immediately turned himself over to the Mingo County authorities to set to sort it out. The paper said that John Van Hoos was a fearly man, a fearless man, taking many lives in his duty, duties as a special officer, especially at the young age of 35. You know how it is, though, folks. We make many mistakes when we're young, but this one cost two lives and cost many years of headache and heartache for their families. This, unfortunately, was just another story among thousands that you'll find once we start, once you start looking. We also found that he had several siblings who died young as well, so we looked into that too. John Lee Markham, and I'll get to him just in a second, he's here too. He was the older brother of Gideon by three years. He died at just 29 years old, just three years before Gideon did. 
He had just recently been hired as a police officer. Uh, right there. There he is. That's him right there. He had just been recently been hired as a police officer in my hometown of Williamson. He and several jurors were being sequestered in a hotel room when a fire broke out. Unfortunately, the fire killed everyone. The jurors, John, everybody. And we're doing a story on John as well very soon. His story was very tragic. And to be honest, it's a, it's a huge story all by itself. Uh, John was married to Sadie, who is, I just saw her too. Okay, she's here somewhere. I just saw her. Yes, yeah, she's right there. John was married to Sadie Wellman, who lived well into the, uh, into the 80s. And they had five children together. Elizabeth Gilmore, uh, two years after Gideon's death, his sister, Elizabeth, died at the age of 43 of tuberculosis. She was married to Ernest Gilmore, and they had two or three children, and he later, later died in 1958 in Florida. So this is really just another family that had many losses all in a row. You know, people, people today, we have losses now, of course, but you just don't hear these kinds of tales as often. You know, strange death and murders like it was a hundred years ago or more. Things were just very different. You know, case, case in point right here. Uh, this brother was a train robber. This brother was a police officer. See the difference? And the entire family pretty much died at a young age. I think the oldest we found was like maybe 43 or something like that. But uh, anyway, it's a, it's a very interesting story, you know, to hear all this kind of stuff. You know, I'm, <laughs> I just don't know, you know, robbing trains and shooting people in the head. And I mean, it's a totally different time than what we have now. You know, these days you hear about stuff, you know, you hear about things like this. You know, of course, in our modern world, you know, there's mean, cruel people, you know, now, just like there was, you know, back in 1911. But it just seems like back in the day, there was a whole lot of them. You know, here, right here lies an entire family of tragic stories, all of them. That's just kind of, kind of blows you away, don't it? You know, you, your, your family, you have all these big plans for your family. You know, you're going to do this, you're going to do that. And you see them growing old and having kids and all this kind of stuff. And the next thing you know, they're robbing trains or they get killed as a police officer. Or something else, tuberculosis, um, you know, just all sorts of things back in the day were were very very deadly you know we've mentioned 1918 many times in our videos and you'll see 1918 the flu epidemic you'll see that a lot hey guys i just wanted to go over a few things with the people that like to see the you know actual proof of the stories we're telling, you know, we don't do stories by rumor generally. Um, so we do like to document what we're saying when we can. Now we are a Legends and Locations channel. So we do, we're not above doing a legend. Because sometimes they're just fun. But our murder stories, you know, they're based on fact. So what you're seeing here is Gideon's sister, Elizabeth Gilmore. Um, they called her Betty. This is her death certificate. So as you can see, she died of tuberculosis, third stage. Uh, date of onset would have been 1929, it looks like. And she died in 1930. Um, she was 42 years old, housewife born and breeding and her parents were Martha
and Wade. Okay, I could not find Gideon's death certificate, which isn't uncommon for people that are killed in these kind of, um, killed by police or Baldwin Feltz, etc. For some reason, I have a harder time finding them. Um, but either way, here's a news article. It says, Van Hoos went in search of Markham, taking with him a constable or deputy sheriff named George Damron. Somewhere between Breeden and Dingus, they found Markham, who, when they told what they wanted, surrendered in apparent good humor, and all three started for the train. Here comes, in what seems at this distance, a most uncountable thing. The officers neither handcuffed their prisoner nor searched him for weapons. And while they were walking along, Markham, as suddenly as lightning strikes, drew a pistol and shot Detective Van Hoos three times, once in the arm, once in the stomach, and the th shirt third shot through the head, killing him instantly. He then turned his weapon on Damron, but the officer was too quick for him and shot him through the left eye, the wound causing instant death. Van Hoos was married, leaving a widow and two children. Okay, so here we have a different account of what happens. This is the third or fourth account that I've read of exactly how that went down, who was shot, how many times, etc. Um, which is why I like to find the death certificates. You know, it kind of tells how many gunshot wounds they have, etc. And, um, but either way, at the end of the day, you know, it ended how it ended. <laughs> So Gideon is buried with his parents, who would be Wade, Markham, and Martha. And this is Wade. Looks like Wade died at 76. And then we have Martha, who died 63 to 64. And this is Martha. And it says here, according to her daughter, Catherine, Martha was conceived out of wedlock and took her mother's maiden name of Brewster on her marriage certificate with Wade Markham. She's listed as Martha Brewster. And it shows three children here, but she had more than that. Obviously, John's not listed as being one of her children, and he is. I mean, yeah. So this is Gideon's brother, John Lee Markham. It shows that he was married to Sadie, like we went over. He's 29 years old, officer of the law, burned in building, December 6, 1927. And this is one of the things that I really like about doing these stories is we live right here where this happened and we didn't know about a hotel burning. Um, but actually we found the name of the hotel Thanks to a subscriber that sent us a story separately on our email, which if anyone else has a good story, you can send it to us at hillbillyfiles at hotmail.com. And we only check it, we only have time to check it a couple times a week and we do the best we can, but we will get to everything eventually. Uh, it has to meet certain criteria for us to be able to do a story, obviously, and we will look into each one. But, um, They'd sent us a story about, ironically, a story that involved John. But it was a whole different wild story, and he was just kind of a side note. So I'm looking forward to making that story and bringing those people and their story to life. 
because John was not the only one who died in that fire. It's actually a really tragic story. But anyways. So that's John Lee, son of Wade and Martha. This, ironically, is a... I don't even know what happened to this person. It's Wade Markham, named, you know, the same name as the dad. He has a different father, Mont Markham and Fanny, but he's uh, Markham, you know. But it says that in 1935, January 5th, that he died of shock from a gunshot wound in abdomen and left leg. Um, and he died at the... Williamson Memorial Hospital. So if anyone has any details of what happened to Wade Markham, uh, it actually says that he was called Wade Markham Jr., but he only added the junior because he didn't want to be confused with Wade Markham Sr. So this is John Van Hoose's find a grave. He's actually buried in Golden Oaks Memorial Gardens in Ashland, Kentucky. And I do plan on making a trip down there to do his story. Uh, I've always been interested in John Van Hoose. So, um, and then we have a whole story here on recounting what happened with more detail. Which I think I'll save that for when I do John's story, actually. Because I think we've kind of beat this horse to death on the... On what happened that day. But yeah. John Van Hoose. 31 years old. Married to Catherine Harris. So anyways. I just wanted to show you guys that stuff. And uh, I hope everyone has a really good day. And hopefully I can get out and do some stories soon with Leo. It's summer. Which means I'm a busy bee at home. Managing our businesses. And, uh, you know, we just, um, well, definitely this fall we have some plans. And in winter, 
is the time that I get to get out and do a lot of this stuff. So I'm really looking forward to it because because I miss it. So either way, thank you guys. Well, okay, guys, I'm going to, I guess, get off here. And I've still yet got some more video to do today. So I guess I better get off here and get to it. We'll see you guys next time on the Hillbilly Files. You guys have a really good day. Thank you for coming along. And we'll, we'll see you guys next time on the Hillbilly Files. Leo out.